So I'm gonna get to the video, but before, let's just play a quick game. How many months ago do you think the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus came out? The answer is a very surprising, at least for me, four months ago, I had to look it up, September 22nd, Apple released the 8 and the 8 Plus. We've had a lot of time to look at it. Now, a lot of my testing time has been spent, admittedly, checking out the iPhone 10, but I went back and looked at the 8 and the 8 Plus to revisit it, see if it's still the phone that I know a lot of you guys are considering buying. As you look at the iPhone 10 and you're like, mm -mm. So my initial review was that the phones really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that much from the 8 and the 8 Plus. And that's kind of changed a little bit because I started using it, then I started expecting a lot from it. The performance on the phone is absolutely incredible. I never thought that most modern release iPhones were ever slow. They're always behind when it came to raw horsepower, but iOS was optimized for the hardware. The phone here still feels incredibly fast with iOS 11. Boot up is insanely fast, as fast of course you get with things like the iPhone 10. Games load incredibly quick, third party apps load fast. You can throw Geekbench scores all you want, but end user experience is what matters. The phone still feels extremely fast. The big difference for me coming back to the 8 Plus I spent a lot of my time testing with from the 10 was getting used to Touch ID again. I've been so used to not having a home button and got used to using gestures. That was definitely a learning curve. But if you're coming from an iPhone that wasn't the iPhone 10, you're gonna be right at home with this experience. Touch ID here still works very well. In fact, it works better for me more accurately than Face ID does, but certainly you have to you know, use your thumb to, to do it. It was a bit hard to get used to not having gestures again, but after two days, it really wasn't an issue. This multitask is very quickly, at least how Apple allows you to multitask with giant air quotes. Battery life is also another area where I became extremely impressed with the phone. I've been super disappointed with battery life on the iPhone 10. On the 8 Plus, I can almost stretch this thing out to two days with normal usage and auto brightness turned on. Battery life is damn incredible when it comes to the iPhone 8 Plus. And I mentioned battery life before I got to screen because I'm probably gonna seem like a bit of a hypocrite here and I'm totally aware of that. It's a 1080p screen and you can take that for what you want. It's no longer a best in class screen. Not to say it doesn't work great, it's still really solid outdoors. Pictures still look great, text still looks crisp. You're not seeing any chunkiness, you're not seeing any pixels because it's still more than the eye can see. But it certainly doesn't look as good as a competition, especially the equally priced competition. But of course, the trade off, you're getting awesome battery life. So again, like I said, I know it's super critical to be like, I want a high res screen and awesome battery life because you, you just clearly can't have everything as you saw what happens with the iPhone X's battery life. Um, but I'd probably sacrifice like, like a tiny bit of battery to maybe get a higher resolution screen on it. But if you're coming from an older gen plus device, you're not gonna notice any difference here on the screen at all. It's a similar experience, it works well. The true tone display is nice. Actually, I kept it on here. So it boils down to the screen is fine. Uh, I really love the way the glass back feel on this generation of devices. I also really like the color. I wish Apple could decide what the heck color Space Gray actually was, because it's like six different versions and eight different iterations. Um, but I like the way Space Gray looks. I really like sort of the eggshell white uh, of the silver. I love that wireless charging is enabled here. The Space Gray is definitely a fingerprint magnet. So if you go for that color, I definitely recommend putting on a D-brand skin. Also, you can get a little bit more grip on it. We'll link to those down below if you want to check them out. My issue with the 8 Plus, and this is a minor issue in the design front, it's the fourth iteration of the same design. We saw this back from the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Things haven't really changed that much. But if you like that design, you're still getting a really good phone, and that's kind of the moral of this whole video. You're still getting almost everything that you get from the iPhone 10, with a few exceptions. Certainly the front-facing camera, you're not getting portrait mode. You're getting close to the same rear camera, and of course the same speed you get with the iPhone 10. If you want to save some money, you want the latest Apple experience, I'm still really enjoying the iPhone 8 Plus. But I will say, the Plus feels gigantic in my hands. So if you don't mind the giant screen size, you wanna go back to something like the iPhone 8, which it's a whole other discussion when it comes to the screen on that phone, that's a decision up to you. It's certainly a better value. You can save value when it comes to an Apple flagship phone, and you're still getting close to what you get with the iPhone 10. So let me know what you guys picked up. I know a lot of you guys decided to go for the 8 or the 8 Plus over the 10 or you switched to Android altogether. And of course, hit the subscribe button and that little bell next to it to get notified when new videos are coming. We got a ton more awesome flagship versus videos coming your way. Until next time, I'm John Ranger with Techno Buffalo.